problem. This has been a great show. For some reason, every time we get near Coochie, there's action. Last year, they held us at the end of the runway until they flushed out some snipers. This year, they wouldn't let us travel except in flights of three, on the theory that if they get one of us, there'd be two of us to get them. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at Coochie by the Sea. By the B.C. Headquarters of the 25th Infantry from Hawaii, and they don't let you forget it either, I'll tell you. It's the only base in Vietnam where the dogs wear grass skirts. Their flag is a cobra rampant on a field of pineapples. Don't mind me, I got up this morning and found a mosquito flying away with my malaria pills. Last year, as we left the strip in our C-130 here, they fired at us from the end of the runway. And the MPs flushed out three Kong and two critics. And I didn't mind the trip coming over here, but the shots are murder. I've had so many shots that when I go to see a doctor, I back into his office. It's my best side. I've been jabbed in so many places that nobody will stand next to me in the washroom. Hong Kong flu is currently sweeping the United States. Isn't that great? You're stuck here and the germs get back to the States. <laughs> Aunt Margaret had a little touch of the flu. I get the feeling that some germs really know where it's at. <laughs> here we were greeted by Admiral James S. McCain, super boss of the entire Pacific. His son, Lieutenant Commander James S. McCain III, a naval flyer, was shot down over Hanoi and is now a North Vietnamese prisoner of war. Everybody pays in this conflict. When we first Oh, goodness, no. I think that Sunset Boulevard is farther out than any country. Haven't you ever been to a love-in? Love-in. <laughs> My doctor doesn't even let me watch laughing. <laughs> and I want to tell you, you're a show business phenomenon. You became a star overnight. Well, I was very fortunate. I did one number on the Academy Award show, and um, people were very, very nice to notice me. Notice you? You shorted every power line between Santa Monica and Kansas City. You're exaggerating. I'm not. I was there. I was standing right there. It's the first time my cummerbund was welded to my navel. <laughs> But one thing is not debatable, that is the contribution our men have made in Vietnam. Their courage, their kindness, their humanity, and their sacrifice can never be undone. It's now part of history, and it is in the finest tradition of America. This was our fifth trip. I never dreamed back in 1964 that it would go on this long, take such a terrible toll. But here we are again, and somewhere along the way, the realization hit me that we were trapped, that we were paying too high a price in our greatest natural resource, our youth. You know, we like to think we help these boys' morale, but there's another kind of morale that gives them much comfort. That's religion. No matter where they are, they find time to set up an altar and pray. I say this every year, and regretfully I say it again. We pray that this was the last of our trips to Vietnam, that 1969 will bring to the Vietnamese people an end to 25 years of continuous warfare and a chance to rebuild their shattered country. And most of all, we pray that our men who helped them so courageously, unselfishly, will come home to begin building their own future. Let's face it, they are America's future. And it was our privilege to visit them this Christmas.